Hello everybody, Gator Russo with Majestic Rider. So today I'm on a Tennessee walking horse and this horse, ooh, look there's cows, she trots when she's loose. She does uh, gate some, but she prefers to trot when she's loose. And so I figured I'd show you a walking horse that's on the trotty side. So I forgot to lunge her. So <laughs> So she might be a little bit more distracted than usual because I have the uh, horses are in very small paddocks so I just like to run them around first. Okay, so let's talk about the trotty Tennessee walking horse. So when she's on the lunge line she'll trot occasionally she'll pace just a little bit otherwise she gates and when she's completely loose running around the arena she is mostly trotting. So with these horses you don't want to tuck their heads down too much and round them out because if you do, the same thing that will happen to the Rocky that's on the trotty side is uh, you'll usually make them trottier or they're going to fox trot. So we want to keep her head up a little bit and then we kind of see how it goes. Each horse is different. Some horses you can bring their head down a little and they'll stay in gait and, and other trotty ones you bring their head down and it changes their gait a lot so you kind of have to experiment yeah. with the walking horses even if she's trotty we don't want it sky high unless you're going for a racking gait so when we're doing the flat walk and the running walk i usually have their head about horn level with hers it's just above my horn and she's looking around so this is just her flat walk and I'm not doing anything except trying to keep her head straight because she's just a little distracted today because we didn't get her extra energy out. And going downhill, remember downhill puts the horses more on the lateral side. So as you're going downhill, you can usually go a little bit faster and that'll help you get more extension in their gait, a bigger stride, and kind of get them swinging a little bit more underneath them. If they all of a sudden convert, they go from trotty to being pacey as you're going down the hill, well then you need to slow down. So you're always experimenting how, how much do I need for this horse? And uh, you're trying to kind of find I don't know, when you spoke, it makes me laugh. You're trying to find that sweet spot, what works for that horse. And each ind horse is individual and different. So that's what you're trying to figure out. So you experiment, you try to figure out head up, head down, neutral, where, where does it work best for that horse? And then you do the same with your body position. So see, she's very smooth going down the hill. But you can experiment, you know, if they're trotty, sit back more, if that seemed to not work then tilt a little bit you know there's basics what you do for trotty and pc horses but sometimes for some of the horses the reverse works so don't give up just try something else if it's not working so i had these guys we ran out of hay and i had them on alfalfa and it makes them just a little bit higher and then i didn't get her lunged or anything so she's just a little bit jumpier so as i go up and down this road that'll get better but that's why if i'm working on gait or trying to teach him something you want him re not to be reactive which is what she's doing right now it's not bad but you want them thinking and so just five to ten minutes of lunging and changing directions every two to three circles makes a big difference in that especially if you have the horse on off alpha some horses are fine on alfalfa and other ones it's like crack and it makes them high as a kite and jumpy and screwy and nutty so you just gotta see all right so this is our flat walk and we're still kind of going downhill i'm not half halting or anything i'm just keeping her head straight the whole time and i just have light light pressure and you'll see her head is about my horn level so this is working well for her so i'm just holding her straight now the, the Tennessee walking horses that are on the trotty side, they can usually do a fox trot. And so if you're feeling a little bump in the saddle and they're not pacing or trotting, you're getting a fox trot. And so your running walk is right below that fox trot. You just need to slow it down. And then if you're doing that, good girl. If you're doing the fox 
trot, but you want their uh, running walk to be faster, just stay slower and uh, keep working on it, work it up hills and stuff, and that'll help you. But if you let them foxtrot every time you want to go faster, well, then they're going to foxtrot. So you just got to decide which gate do you like. Okay, so we're going to go up and back. So I'm going to hold her straight. And I'm going to speed up a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of leg. Now, since I know she's on the trotty side, I don't have my hands as high as they were on Shane, because that was a different gait. But my hands are about my hip level, the top of my hip. Now, she's almost changing into a fox trot, so I'm just half halting and slowing her down a little bit. So remember the trotty ones when you're going uphill, which is what I'm doing right now, they're gonna get trottier. So as we go up this hill, she'll probably prefer more to go into a fox trot. So if I don't want that, I'm just gonna keep her head just a little higher. So I'm gonna lift my hands a little higher. If their head stops shaking, then it usually means you're doing a step pace or a rack, racking gait, which is like a saddle gate because this is slow this is not a fast rack so there she's trying to change a little bit more towards a fox trot you can hear the footfall changing so i'm just slow her down because again we're going uphill on a trotty horse the hill makes them trottier so they're going to go more towards a fox trot so with her i'm going to keep it a little bit slower until we get flatter so every time she speeds up or you hear this I'm going to half halt. There she started racking a little bit. So you'll see her head's just a little above my horn. This is not, you don't want to tuck her head way down when you're going up hills because that'll make them trotty. This is the confusing thing for a lot of people when we're going, you know, I rode hunter jumper and dressage. When we did that stuff and then you go to gated, you're like, what? are you talking about picking their head up? Why would I do that? Well, it works. You're not going to want to do it. Because, <laughs> you know, we were always teaching them to bring their heads down, not up. But if you want the smooth gait and they're on the trotty side, you might want to bring that head up a little bit. So she's doing good. Now we're going to turn around and go back to and going downhill. Back up here. So with her, since she's on the trotty side, going downhill, I didn't do much except for steer her. And if it gets a little bumpy going downhill, she's not getting trotty going down the hill. She gets pacey. So if it feels uncomfortable or it feels like she's wobbling back and forth, it means she's going towards the pace and we just squeeze and relax on the rein and half halt and slow them down. A lot of these horses try to get crooked and so as you half halt and slow them down, hold them straight. But especially the walking horses, she's not real loose and lanky but some are and you really got to hold them. So she's just not paying attention and because she's not paying attention she was changing her gait there. So see how she's looking left, but her her neck's going to the right and her body's going to the left because she's like, what's in that woods? So there she just changed her gait, so I just held and slowed her back down. So I'm half halting because now she's getting a little too fast. And she was changing her gait. So remember, it's, it, Minnie doesn't know what I want and she's a little bit energetic today. This isn't bad, but more than usual so I gotta tell her no go slower and I do that by using my half halts I just squeeze relax on the rein if you hold your horse too much they get feel confined and they usually pull down on the bit more and, or start rooting on the bit because they want to get away from you so squeeze relax make sure they slow down so hold till they slow down and then release and that way you're not in their mouth the whole time but you might have to half halt every step if they're being quicker or changing their gait. And just remember, your horse is going to be different than your friend's horse, and your friend's horse is going to be different than their friend's horse. 
So even in the same breed, walking horse, you know, you can have one that gates perfectly. You can have one that's on the trotty side, one that's on the pacey side. And those you just have to help them a little bit to get their gait and stay in gait. But there's good and bad things about both of those. And uh, I like the horses on the trotty side. They're usually a little bit more sure-footed. They bring their knees up higher. They canter easier. The ones on the pacey side can be a little bit smoother, uh, but they can be more trippy and they tend to drag their feet more. So knowing those things, you just have to ride the horses a little bit differently. And the ones that gate perfectly, that, those are fantastic if you get them, but not all of them are like that. Or they gate perfectly and they're crazy. I'd rather take a trotty or pacey one with a good temperament versus one that is super smooth and a nut job, right? So it's good practice. You can go up and down the road, practice your gates. You can hear the footfall. Watch out for traffic. Because if you can't feel the gate, a lot of people can hear it. Remember, every terrain, grass, dirt, sand, road, is going to change your horse's gait. So you have to adjust them for the terrain you're on to keep the gait. So she's good. So let's try a little racking gait here. So I'm going to keep her head up just a little, a lot, maybe. She's trying to pop the shot a little bit. I mean, whatever she does is pretty smooth. Okay, so you see her head's not shaking that much. That's how you know you're not doing your running walk anymore. There she goes. There she got a little pacey and crooked. I'm going to push her left. Because that's the way she went. Straighten her back out. And just push them back into it. And they can fall out of gate. That's fine. Because they just changed from going uphill to flat. And if you're not, you want that racking gate and they're not getting it, there she got a little pacey. Let's slow it back down and start again. Remember, if they spook, they'll usually go right into a rack, so you can kind of scare them a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Now we're going to stop, stop. Good girl. Yeah. So now we're going to go back and do it again. Now, good girl. Okay. Uh, if you're on the cement, be very careful of that. That's a blacktop. It's like ice. And you'll slip and fall. And your horse can get very hurt. You have to do it again, Minnie. And if you're going to ride on the road, use a shoe that has traction or put Vorian or studs on your shoes because you don't want to slide. because you can slide on asphalt or use rubber shoes those are pretty cool too and uh, I rode a horse with those on and it gripped on the asphalt quite nicely okay so remember going downhill they get a little bit more peace so we're just going straight still trying to look around Half halt, relax, because we got faster. Half halt, relax. Half halt, relax. Hold her straight. So I just apply my right leg. This is where she looked left last time and her body went to the right. See her look again. So something's probably up there. 
Oh, there's a trash can behind the tree. I didn't see it. Any. So see, she saw that. It could, could have been a person. Okay, here she's a little fast. So half all relax. Half all relax. Half all relax. Keep her straight. Pick an imaginary line down the road. There, she's got a very nice walk. Her flat walk. You see something else? She's like, I see the world, Gay. I don't know what you're seeing. Many, I only see in front of us. Okay. This is a good walk. Listen, see if you hear a change. There, just change. So half halt, relax. Right, if you're flat walking, you should feel a little back and forth motion. And then as you do the running walk, some of the horses will still have a back and forth motion and some horses will be pretty darn smooth. But the ones with a lot of overreach will have a lot of back and forth motion. Which can rub you raw, so you might have to ride a little bit more in your thigh. Have a fleece cover on your saddle. Make sure your saddle is small enough that you don't move around too much. He just has a little back and forth motion, not a lot, which is nice. And this is the first time I've made her just go up and down the road and not like on a ride across the street or somewhere else. So they might test you like, why are we keep going down here? But this is great exercise to work on the gates or if your horse's barn set would ride back and forth. And when you get back to the barn, make them work, right? Ready? Okay. So we're going to go back. So this time I am going to go all the way back to the barn and then when I get there we'll either open and close gates or work some more. And then I'll probably tie her up too. She's messing around a little bit. Did you see her head? Can you just straighten and tell them no? She's like, do you want to rack? What do you want to do? Do you want to canter up this? No. And remember, they don't know what you want in the beginning, especially because we haven't done this before. So she's checking. And they are going to pick the easiest option, usually. So she's very smooth. I don't really have any back and forth motion on her. Now this is where we could probably get a little rack, so let's go a little faster and see. Just holding her straight, and I'm squeezing just a tiny bit on the reins, not much. Right there, because she did a little canter step. I'm going to push her over. Now she hit a pace. So what am I going to do? i got to slow her down, get her out of that, start again. That's what they're doing. Good girl. Okay, now we're going to slow down. It's going to flatten now, so she's not going to do the rack as well. So we're just going back to our running walk. She changed, so a little half halt. And you might be like, why is she changing? Well, there's little bumps in the road. It goes up and down. All oh, that affects their gait. So a half halt. You can hear the gait changing. Yes, I know you're mad. There we go. So her gait will sound different on this road versus a pacey horse or a horse that just gates. And it'll look different too because she's on the trotty side. A little 
chapel, she got faster. So when you're watching videos of horses, if the horse is trotty, or it's on the pacey side, or it just gates, it will look a little different. Let's stop here and look. That's not me, that was mini farting. So now, the cow's hiding behind the barn. So what I do is shortened up. See, she's racking now. But she's a little nervous. Just like I said. <laughs> now when I get up here, this cow might jump out. So I'm going to keep my right rein and right leg against her. I'm going to keep my left rein a little open. I'm sitting way back. And then I'm going to get ready to turn left. Because if it jumps out, she's probably going to go to the right or she's going to want to go home. There you go. There he is. So if she had spooked, I would turn that direction too because I want her to see the cow. So she's fine when she sees what it is. But now I got some energy, I have double energy I'm going towards home. And she got a little nervous with the cow. Right? And we got a hill. Ding, ding, ding. We got it all. Let's rack. So think of being a little bit in your chair seat. You're on a trotty horse. Hands high. About my chest level. And that's why I have her head for the rack too. There she went out of it a little bit. So I half halted. Another little half halt. Because she said I can go faster, and I said, well, you can't go faster in your rack, can you? She's like, well, no. Okay. So that was fun, right? That was a lot of fun. All right. So now, you see, I just ran home, right? That makes horses barn star. So that's why I'm like, yeah, I'm running home, but then I'm going to do something not fun. So she don't want to run home. So it's always good to teach them to open and close gates, so that's what we're going to do. Alright, lots of gate videos, so I don't think you want to watch that. So hopefully that helps you, for those of you that have a uh, tennis <laughs> That dog tries to get us every time. A Tennessee walking horse that is on the trotty side. And for some of you watching this video, you'll see she did spook at times. And some of you will be like, I don't want a horse that spooks. Lots of horses spook. All she does is spook in place, so it's pretty hard to fall off when they jump in place. But just know they all can spook, and some of the horses that don't spook at all, when they do spook, it's huge. If they're not afraid of much, then that means when they get scared, they're really afraid. So work on your balance, and uh, just know that happens with horses. We all fall off because it's moving. And if we're not paying attention or it bounces wrong or we're on reins like this where it's loose and floppy, you really can't shorten up quickly. So the horse usually spins by the time you're trying to grab your rein. So if you're not good or you're slow, you want to make sure you keep those reins short so you're always ready and just keep your hands forward so you're not pulling on them unless you need it.